that had 18 Corvettes in his lifetime. And that's a true number. Was he a used car dealer? No. No, oh, just... no he's one, one of the best uh, sports writers uh, to ever come down the pike. I'd like to recognize some sponsors. Track record bonus sponsored by Isma is going to be awarded. The driver to be able to break that track record. If multiple drivers break the record, then it is awarded to the driver who officially records the fastest time of the event. Here's my hard charge reward. It's going to go to uh, a driver out here today for $100, uh, sponsored by Baker Steel Detailing. Last car running award, $100. H&S Design and Prototype LLC. A little hot lap action going on here. Listen, if anybody caught a Frisbee earlier this afternoon, I do want to mention, if you're not aware, that Frisbee could have a signature on the back of the one that you're holding. And if that's the case, bring it on down to the novelty trailer following the feature, and you will receive a free Isma t-shirt. I will announce that again as soon as the car slow. Boy, Michael Barnes putting on a smoke show, the apex first and second corner. Wow. He went around very, very quickly. So we see the smoke, so a, a little uh, sideshow here for the ISMA Super Modifieds. A lot of people involved with ISMA this year. And here is John to tell you of uh, more sponsor involvement in this series. I just wanted to jump back in here, Matt, and uh, recognize the Frisbee toss. Uh, we were starting to get into that, and the uh, Supers uh, went into hot laps. If you picked up a Frisbee here that was uh, tossed up into the crowd earlier today, um, you may be holding a Frisbee that's going to get you a novelty here today, a T-shirt, an Isma T-shirt at the Novelty Trailer. It's just look on the other side of your Frisbee, and if it's got a signature, an autograph by an Isma driver, bring it on down to the Isma T-shirt uh, display over at the Novelty Trailer. We'll have that there for you. Maybe you're already on to that. I don't know. And if John signs it, it's probably counterfeit. But uh, <laughs> as this is going to be an impressive uh, start, we have a great event coming up. We saw Dr. Dick Bergren earlier today, and uh, he has a big time event coming up uh, next uh, or in the, the end of October. And John will tell you about it. Well, you know what? The good thing about it is this. Dick uh, advised me today. He says, hey, we're sold out. And they are, but I just wanted to recognize what is happening because a lot of great things are happening at the Northeast Motorsports Museum, located right down the street from the big track up in Loudoun, New Hampshire. And uh, coming up on the 27th of October, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., three very special people are going to uh, be recognized, and uh, Eddie West is one of them who raced the Super Modifieds from 1961 to 1986. Holly Silva from 1949 to 1981. And the great Bentley Warren from 1956 to 2016. Of course, all of them started out in jalopies in their careers, but they uh, ended up becoming three huge names in Super Modified racing here in the Northeast. It's, it is sold out. But it bears mentioning because there's a lot of things, a lot of very special events that are going to be happening in the future as time goes on. If you have not gone up to see the Northeast Motorsports Museum, have not had the opportunity to go there, you really owe it to yourself because they have done a tremendous job um, with what they have completed thus far. It's really a nice setup. It's, uh, things change all the time. And, uh, you know, you may go, you know, next month and you may go back next year and things will be changed around. They've got all kinds of stuff on display and uh, things for the kids. They do family-oriented things. 
and uh, it's very special. And we hope that you'll have the opportunity to go up there. So many very important people were part of uh, the development and uh, the building of the Northeast Motorsports Museum. And uh, if you have an opportunity, looking for something to do, check their website for the uh, hours that uh, they are open on uh, the weekends here in the off season. We'll be up there on the 27th. We're going to uh, do some work with uh, Dick Bergren and uh, looking forward to it. Well, right now, uh, the busiest people will be our track crew as there is oil on the track. So that is a challenge for our track crew to get it clean. So uh, oil and uh, asphalt never are a good combination. So we have to take care of that situation with the oil on the track. Uh, we would like to congratulate Dick Bergen because on January 31st, he will be going into the NASCAR Hall of Fame of probably the number one honor that a journalist could get. And he was, of course, a TV commentator, uh, one of the early uh, voices of ESPN, went to uh, Turner and then uh, wound up his career at uh, CBS and then Fox Sports. He was also uh, a legendary uh, publisher of Speedway Illustrated. Uh, he is involved in that. It used to be Dick Bergeron's Speedway Illustrated. So he was a top publisher, a top announcer, and he will be going into the special uh, NASCAR Hall of Fame wing that honors journalists. Uh, I know one guy who was in there, Ken Squire, as uh, Dr. Dick worked for him when he was a pit reporter, and uh, Ken Squire was the voice of Turner and CBS Sports. So uh, that is the ultimate for a person in the journalism profession to be in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. And uh, you know where he got to start? No. Star Speedway. Star Speedway. With the souvenir stand. I thought it was at uh, Manchester High. That's where he went, and he used to uh, cut classes early to go work on race cars. Oh, he did that too. But, no, he started his career at Star Speedway. He had the, uh, the souvenir stand there. And, of course, he took the photos, which is uh, where it all started as far as the camera work goes. But um, he also started with uh, Nesmera up north at the Arundel Speedway, doing some microphone work up there. And it just took off from there one of the real outstanding careers, as you say, in racing journalism. There's nobody better than Berge. Yeah, and he will uh, be part of the big uh, ceremony on January 31st. You see our track crew very busy between turns one and two as they are trying to clean up that oil spill that was created. So... Uh, it will take a little bit of time for them to get the track race ready as uh, oil is never a good thing to uh, spill out onto the track, and that is the case between turns one and two. We are awaiting the 50-lap feature for the Isma Super Modifieds and uh, quite a power-packed front row with Mar Mike Ordway and John McKennedy 900 horsepower machines and they will be putting on some unbelievable laps on the board we see the jersey jet is there in car number 14 i think uh he qualifies for legendary status oh there's as no doubt he is, about uh, it. Yeah. he has done a great job in uh, not just in the super modifieds but also in the nema midgets so a very versatile driver those not here yesterday, uh, that 14 car, Derek Pernasiglio pointed it out to me. He says, come over in here and take a look at this. And I did. I spoke to Joey Payne about it this morning at our hotel over in Auburn. Not much room to maneuver in that thing. And I looked at Derek and I said, how do you get out of that thing in a hurry? But what a race car that number 14 is. Joey is ecstatic to be back racing Super Mario. Took a break for a while, didn't see much of him, but uh, he is really excited to be back. And it's good to see one of the real top names in Super Modified Racing. And as you say, Nima Midget's back in action here racing in the Northeast. And we know he has to drink a lot of uh, diet soda because if he doesn't, 
it would be hard to squeeze into that seat. So he will be starting in the middle of the pack, car number 14, Joey Payne. Mike Licky, the point leader, he is starting and scheduled to start in fourth alongside Tim, uh, Chris Purley. So a lot of speed in that second row with Purley and Licky. And now we are getting these cars uh, heated up. The uh, fluid's hot, the tire's hot. And now the yellow comes out, so we are uh, just about ready to get the party started for the Super Modifieds. Always a key part of World Series weekend, as I don't think it would be an official World Series without an appearance by the Isma Super Modifieds. So the white flag is about to be shown to our competitors as we are doubling up the field and the white is out that means the next time around they will be going for keeps with Schulich and McKennedy in the front or Mike Ordway and McKennedy in the front row so as they go into turn number two we will turn things over to the man who has called the Valente Modified Series from the beginning the voice of the Isma Super Modifieds the voice of New Hampshire racing John Spence. Thank you, Matt. Grandma, Grandpa, hold on to each other. Hold on to your dentures, because here we go. The Supers are under the green flag as they go into that number one corner. And immediately, we got a wing-to-wing -wing battle out of two down the back straightaway. McKenzie wants the top spot. Ordway Jr. wants it as well. An explosion by Ordway Jr. coming out of turn number four. McKennedy is right there with him, and McKennedy, he flash dances his way into the lead. And look who's coming on strong, real fast down the front straight away. It is the Raleigh Rocket trying to catch up to those two cars. Chris Burley is on the move in the number 11. And right behind him is that number 84, Olicki, and the 32 of Ben Sykes. Remember, he won the Nima Midget race yesterday, so he is red hot, but nobody's hotter than McKennedy as he leads by a diving board over the 61 of Mike Ordway. John McKennedy would love to wrap up this 2019 campaign with Isma with a feature win here today. And I think a lot of people know why. Through the shadows of two, down the back straightaway, Ordway stays right there. In the Clyde Booth number 61, the Lee and Pam Vinyl number 21 continues to lead it. And Purley trying to catch up to the top two in car number 11. A battle for fourth and fifth. Here is Sykes underneath Licky. And the blue 32 is going to pick up the position. we got a car over in the fourth corner down on the apron. And I believe that is going to be the Jet, Joey Payne. Or is it uh, Trent Stevens? From the angle we've got here. Uh, so Trent, we see Trent, Trent right Stevens, so uh, yeah. that would have to be, by the process of elimination, the jet. And that is Joey Payne, ran into some turbulence, coming off of turn number four, and the yellow comes out for the first time. Dave Dugan, quickly on pit road, and that block number 51, and he is joined by the 55 car. Uh, that is Reed there in the... Uh, 55, so already some uh, early fireworks. It was a great move by Ben Seitz to get by the 84 of Licky, but because we didn't complete the lap, it will still be Licky in fourth and Seitz in fifth. In sixth spot, it's Kyle Edwards. Trent Stevens is uh, in the seventh position right now. Timmy J is in eighth. Michael Barnes, ninth. Dave Schulich is credited with 10th at this point. Mike Nedishin is 11th, Mark Samet 12th, Bobby Chadier is 13th, Jamie Timmons 14th, and Dan O'Connor, the Oswego driver, is in 15th. Guys, so it is, it is easy to calculate the leader, and that is John McKennedy, who has had great runs at Thompson in all varieties of cars. A crowd favorite, Chris Purley, car number 11. His car owner, Vic Miller, a member of the New England Racing Hall of Fame. And he has won a lot of championships in that uh, number 11 car. Right now, Dugan is being released from pit road, and he will join his comrades 
at the rear of the field. And so far, the move of the race was by Ben Seitz, but it didn't count because the yellow canceled the move. And we'll see if he can do it again against the point leader, Mike Lickey. So Lickey fighting for positions. And uh, Seitz was able to uh, just thunder by him. So we are uh, getting ready to uh, resume. And John, so far, McKennedy has been flawless. Certainly has. Spoke with a fan earlier today over in Auburn visiting Thompson Speedway for the first time. He's been trying to get here for 25 years. And uh, he said he hit the, uh, the big uh, cash payout deal, the 50-50 at the Oswego Classic. Congratulations to him. Put him in a position to get here. He was here for the first time. He's been wanting to come to Thompson Speedway for 25 years. He was wearing a curly Miller t-shirt. Well, I think he is having a great time as the Super Modifieds are joined by some of the best divisions in the Northeast. Coming up next will be the Northeast Midget Association. But now we are ready for lightning bolts. And here is John McKennedy. Let's see if he can hold off the combination of Ordway and Curley. He came off that number four corner very, very quickly. Now Curley's going to try to get up to that number 61. Let's see where we go to the outside. Ordway drives the center line through three and four. Curley's right there with him down the straightaway. There goes the 32. Sykes in a battle with Lickey, and he wins that battle. Retaliation by Lickey as he tried to go down low, and Sykes shut the door. He did. Good job of doing so, too. Here's Curley trying the high side off the fourth corner one more time. Can't get close enough to get a shot at Ordway. He's solid in second. But the pace setter right now certainly is that number uh, 21 car, John McKennedy. Curley is capable of taking that number 11 car to places where no other driver will go. Right now, he trails the 61 of Mike Ordway. And Ben Sykes, we know he's fast because he got by Mike Lickey. And he is approaching the back bumper with a Chris Curley car. Kyle Edwards continues to run in sixth spot. TJ is in seventh. Frank Stevens is eighth. Michael Barnes is ninth. And Dave Phillips, Q2 is tenth. As Barnes trying to make a move in the black of the 44, that is against the uh, Edwards car. So we'll see if he can pull it off. Meanwhile, up at the front, John McKennedy, he is getting by some of the slower traffic, but staying right there with him is Ordway in the 61. That was almost a close call between Ordway and the one car, but Ordway was able to steer clear of danger, and so is Merlin. Early gets underneath that number 55 of Mike Nettish. He's been a good run here, running in the number three position. Sykes is still four, and... Uh, down the back straightaway, Kyle Edwards is currently in the fifth position. And now we have a battle between Jedrasek and Licky, and Licky is in danger of losing another position, and he does. Timmy J is able to trampoline his way underneath the 84 of Licky. Woodway is in a good spot, but can he catch that number 21? As uh, the last flip off here. And Curley looked like he was running harder than that at the uh, drop of the green flag. He stayed right up to the contention for the number two spot. But uh, is he sitting back there or is he not as fast as he think he could possibly be? Well, it's always an adventure. Trouble for the 14 of pain as Payne is in Weed Whacker country, adjacent to the front straightaway. So Payne is in the weeds, and we have our second yellow. It comes on lap number 13. And it has been a tough afternoon so far for the Jet. The and car comes out of California, and um, Don Penix, he's uh, supported the Yzma series here for the last uh, couple, three years maybe. Al Lesieski made a trip on the pit road in that red number seven car. So that fan this morning 
Why did I bring it up? He's from uh, west of Cleveland. And he finally got to Thompson. Want to get here for 25 years, so congratulations to him. We hope you're enjoying the show here. You got the well, wheeling the tour only, coming up, too. The only negative in that, that Cleveland Indian fan has to listen to all the Yankee fans after what happened last night. But if he can deal with that, he will have a great trip here to Connecticut. Timmy J made a great move against the 84 Alicky, who has lost a couple of positions since this race got underway. And Mike Ordway will have an opportunity to try to derail the McKennedy Express, which has been pretty potent. Remember, coming up next, we will have the NEMA Lights. And uh, the winner of the NEMA Midgets, you're watching him in action right now in the blue number 32, Ben Seitz. The championship in the NEMA Midgets, a regular division, was won uh, last night by Avery Store, And we will see who can capture the title later today in the NEMA Lights. And then following NEMA, we will bring out the Wheeland Modified Tour. Andrew Krause surprised everybody yesterday. I think he sent shockwaves through the uh, New England area to the race fans by winning the poll against some great competition. So Andrew Krause will be leading the field around in the World Series 150. Remember, making it all happen, Sunoco and New England Race Fuel, Sunoco brand, John Holland, his staff, Gary Byington, his dad, Charlie Holland, and uh, Mike Joy, they all uh, have stepped up to the plate to bring you a lot of excitement this weekend despite getting off to a bad start because of the bad weather. And those trophies, have you got a close look, John, at that trophy? Not yet. It is a gas pump, uh, a replica of that. The only thing missing from a regular gas pump, there's no place to put your credit card. But outside of that, it is an authentic gas pump. Uh, the big trophies today that is, are being awarded to all the winners. Really, we you see the 14 uh, pain he is uh, going to be worked on there uh, on pit road. Earlier, you made a comment. It seems like the Supers have been part of the World Series for many, many years, a long, long time. Did a quick scan back to 1976. They were uh, on board here at Thompson Speedway. And a race that went 50 laps in distance that was won by Big Daddy, Hall of Famer Don McLaren. Interestingly enough, the following, well, no, it was actually in the same year. They brought them back in on October 17 of 1976. And another McLaren won. No relation to Donald, but this was John McLaren. Donald was Don McLaren. This one here, John McLaren, I believe he came out of Texas. He won the same year. So there you go. Well, this is Mark Kennedy in car number 21 getting the jump on Ordway. Hurley in a dangerous position in car number 11 going after Ordway. This might have been the opportunity Chris Hurley was hoping to see as he goes down that back straightaway, looking to catch up to that 61 to contest for the number two spot. We got a side-by-side -side battle going on here, and that's going to be Kyle Edwards going after Sykes as they're wing the wing through the first and second turn off too. And Edwards has some giddy up, but not enough to get by Ben Sykes. He tries again, turn number four, and Edwards has his hands full operating against Ben Seitz. John McKennedy continues to be the guy they're all chasing. Now they've got to move for the number two spot by Curley. It didn't get done because Wardway put his leg in it. And now putting his body in it is Chris Curley as he tries to cannonball his way underneath Wardway into turn number two. It is a Raleigh rocket. He has plenty of ammunition to shoot down Wardway and move into second. Now he's got his sights on the back of the Leon Ham final number 71. Final excavating number 21 car, I'm sorry. As uh, he's got that top spot, but right now Burley's trying to reel him in down the back straightaway. Then he's got Edwards and Sykes continuing to battle for the number four position, and right now it is Sykes. They're having a sparring session as Sykes 
was able to get back at the 11 after Stevens passed him. Then we have Timmy Jedrzejczyk in the 97. He is running next up at the front. It is early. There is a slower car. It looks like uh, the 51 of Dugan was between McKennedy and Hurley. They both were able to get by on that previous lap. John McKennedy almost got into the back of Dugan. Dugan staying up top, going around through the uh, corners and down the straightaway. Watching the leaders get around and through the lap traffic, that is one of the exciting things about the Isma Super Modified. Running in third or way, and we'll see if Sykes can move up the challenge as he was able to get by Trent Stevens. Then Jedrzejczyk is a factor. And then uh, it is Wiki a little farther back than we expected to see him. Michael Barnes is running eighth, shoot two ninth, and Trent Stevens is currently in the tenth spot. Well, that was another close call for McKennedy against Jamie Timmons. And now let's see if Hurley can make it through. He gets by the first car, attacking him with Timmons, and he tomahawks his way underneath the 27. So Hurley is standing right with McKennedy. John McKennedy. Pretty sharp here this afternoon. He was fast during the heat race competition yesterday. As you recall, he went off the pace, too, and uh, made his way to the pitter. Good to see whatever that was all about. And, uh, he's got this thing going real strong right now. And Curley is able to blast his way under the Timmons. So now there's nothing but racetrack separating the Kennedy from the 11. We are at the halfway mark. So John McKennedy is halfway home. But in his immediate future, John, are a couple of cars going side by side. So we'll see how McKennedy attacks that situation. And can Burley catch up to get involved in that? As they just kicked off into the uh, number one turn. Here we go. Kennedy now coming up on uh, three slower cars. And uh, rids the needle. Goes to the outside of the new six. Darts to the bottom of uh, that car there in the first turn. And John's gotten through that. Now let's watch the rock. As he heads down the back straight away, dealing with that number 86, no problem there. He's got a couple more to deal with here as he comes down the front straight away. Right at that job. Closer to the number 21 is John. John's on a rail. You can see how fast he's off turn number two. I think they put Napalm in that number 21 car as he has erupted early, finally gets by the smaller car, which wiggles behind him. But Hurley now on the attack. Uh, Chartier is done for the day as he goes on to pit road. And now it's a two-man battle shaping up between John McKennedy and Chris Hurley. Mike Woodway Jr., third in the points coming into this season-ending event. Right now, he's third in the standings here in this final 50 lapper. So the big issues is how McKennedy deals with the forward traffic in front of him. Other issues. And so far, there have been a couple of uh, nail bites. 21, as he is looking for an opening against Connors in the 0-1 car. Sites and uh, Edwards are battling for position here. Sykes trying to hang on. He goes up top going into one. And Edwards had a look down low going through the first and second corner, but Sykes prevailed out of turn number two as they continue to work through slower traffic. And that could give Edwards an advantage as he continues to be paper clipped to the back bumper. And we have problems right on the front straightaway as it is the seven car uh, Valesky, yes, Valesky, who uh, winds up on the side road. First visit here to Thompson. Uh, the World Series Valesky, yes, uh, and that uh, red number seven, Al, is in trouble. And you 
also have And also moving on to the road is Jamie Timmons, Dave Dugan in the 51. So we have a fleet by John Hitty. We'll be challenged on the East Chart, the single flower East Chart, but right behind him will be Chris Hurley. And I think he knows a few things about restarting a race here at Thompson. Ordway third, then Sykes fourth. And then it will be Stevens in the number five spot, the defending champ. Dave Barabo standing by down on Pit Road. What do you have, Dave? Well, I've got the Jack Joey Taylor. This is Joey from the to pick out the 14 today. Well, we, uh, you know, this is an Oswego car, and we put a wing on it, try and come with these guys. And, uh, you know, we only had one warm up on Fry on Saturday, and the uh, track was kind of damp, so we really didn't get a good test. And, uh, we're just a little off, you know. Uh, the car's a good car. i got to thank my car owner, Dom Penix. He put the Water, Lucky Oil, Wheels Out of Water, and JSM Dab are the sponsors on the lead car coming into this season. Race here today. And out of the paddock area, off of uh, Pit Road, is the seven car of Lesieski. He will be located at the rear of the field. And John McKennedy has been the dominant factor for the first 32 laps. We'll be trying to do it again. The all-time win leader in the Super Modified Division and at Thompson Speedway on World Series weekend. He had quite a winning streak at one time. And what to expect from Hurley? And for everything. Because he is the, uh, he is the daredevil. We have yellow before they can get up to speed. So that was a false alarm. Now Timmons is back out in the 27. So John, I think Hurley has his game face on here. We could be seeing an assault on the wing of the number 21 of McKennedy. back in the air and here we go down the straightaway into that number one corner it looks like uh john mckennedy is picking up right where he left off with trouble for pearly yeah he is Pearly slow. dropping off the pace and you wonder what happened here dramatically the bottom of the first and second turn coasting down to that straightaway he may be pulling the pocket here and there it is as we saw pearly go to the outside it looked like it looked like he was going to make a legitimate move against McKennedy, and all of a sudden, the car became undernourished. He started to uh, drift backwards, and Pearly, he is uh, hobbling onto the safety road. So uh, Chris Pearly in a bit of a predicament as he was ready to make a move against McKennedy, but things never uh, turned out the way he had wanted them to. So Pearlie is on the disabled list in the 11 car. We have completed 32 laps. John Kennedy has dominated most of them. And now uh, inheriting second place is Mike Ordway Jr. Ben Seitz in third. Then it is uh, Stevens in fourth. And rounding out our top five is Timmy Jedrasek. Then it's Licky in six, Michael Barnes in seven, and then it's the 49 of Dave Schulich in eighth. So that is the way they stand up at the front. And will Ordway have a surprise for McKennedy? We are about to find out. 
Motors come alive as they work in the three. Green flag is up and over the speedway, and here we go. Seitz is in third now. Edwards is in the fourth position. Look at the number 97 trying to get himself right up on the uh, inside of uh, Edwards going down the back straightaway. They are wing to wing, and they are really getting around here very, very fast. Boy, Jefferson is finally able to pull away from Trent Stevens as he was sitting on his lap for a couple of uh, go rounds. So Seitz is in third, Jefferson in fourth, Stevens in fifth, but McKennedy continues to dominate. Certainly has since the drop of green flag. He's been the guy that we chasing throughout the entire feature race to this point. And is he getting down that back straightaway quick? Seitz is third. Nice run here. Come tough through this race, and right now he's in third spot as a result of uh, early dropping out of the event. Timmy J is in the fourth position. Veteran driver, Timmy Jedrzejczyk. Driving again this year for Howie Lane. Sharing the honors with the number nine car. Uh, the number 11 of Edwards is second in the point standing but he is only one spot ahead of Mike Lickie in the 84. Then the 44 coming on, a lot better day today than yesterday for Michael Barnes. He struggled then, he is solid today. We saw uh, Russ Wood get behind the wheel of the number 97 car at the Star Classic this year, Hall of Famer. He can still get it around. And so can the Kennedy as he tries to expand his lead over Mike Ordway Jr. And Ordway Jr. knows that Seitz is behind him. And Seitz has had some uh, firepower in that number 32 car. So things won't be easy for Mike Ordway Jr. Seitz is coming on and so is Jedrzejczyk. Both of those drivers, Seitz and Jedrzejczyk, have had pretty solid races. Brian Callen ready to show 10 to go to the race leader, John McKennedy. As he zips down the front straightaway. And he's going to uh, be very careful coming up on these slower cars. He saw the uh, seven car up to the outside. So Johnny comes right down to the bottom of the car. So he's up by Timmons, and now he is going after Lesieski in that number seven. So we'll see if uh, Kennedy can uh, operate smoothly. As right now he scampers out of turn number four, closing in on the seven. And Ordway bogged down by Timmons as he was almost a paper clip to the back bumper. And he finally gets away, but it cost him a lot of ground. Ben Sykes making a move he against is. Timmons. He right to the inside in that number 92. You see the wing? Bouncing up and down on uh, Timmy J's 97 car. It has bounced a lot, and he's got by Timmons. And Stevens trying to do it. And there he goes. He finds an alley. Now McKennedy. There are three cars in front of him. So this could be nerve-wracking time for McKennedy. We still have five laps to go when they hit the line. So McKennedy, right now he is boxed in. The 0-1 of Connors in front of him. And he is trying to get underneath him, and he does. It's a nice job. Yeah, that could be a little hair-raising thing for McKennedy. That's going to be nerve-wracking no matter who you are, especially when you're going into that first corner at the speed that you're doing. Right now, he's on the inside of uh, Jeffrey Battle, and uh, he moves by, and he's got, a, he's got a clear speedway that lies ahead here for the finish. So I think he has gotten rid of all the issues that existed. And now McKennedy, nothing but the asphalt as far as the eye could see. In second place, Ordway, he has to get under the 55. And he is able to do that. But he is uh, almost needs a Hubble telescope in his car to find out where John McKennedy is, who uh, is really uh, one of his strengths today is getting through the lap cars without any trouble. Next time around, they are going to get the one to go from Ryan Callen. As uh, the number 21 car 
takes the white flag. And with Big D looking down on the Big T, his son is going to close out the season with a victory. Solid run for Mike Woodway Jr. The 32 car is going to be credited with third and sights as they come down the front straightaway, getting double checkers from uh, Brian Callum to wrap it up the 2019 season. So our winner is the number 21 of John McKennedy. And uh, we have seen him in uh, modifieds, but uh, he is also very good in the super modifieds. And now we'll find out who is the winner of the Russ Conway Legendary Lap Award. And that will go to the driver who had the fastest lap during the course of the race. Which John McKennedy caught the checkered flag, but not the way he had hoped. Got on the right side of that car. He'll go ahead and take the victory lap around this racetrack. As a winner here today is the Super Modified. Season comes to a conclusion. Up next, we'll have the NEMA lights on track and the wheel and modified to our great opportunity to make your way down to the Midway. Check out one of our many displays down there and visit with one of our partners who are with us here this weekend at Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park and even have the opportunity to go down there and win some prizes at one of the many booths here at the Midway at Thompson. Mini stocks up next, our winner making it down to Critical Signs Victory Lane. Get the chance to hoist the Sunoco World Series of Speedway Racing Crown, those trophies that are so special and a very unique and emotional victory lane here for this team winning in their final race together. Now, John McKennedy not only won the race, but he is a winner of the Russ Conway Legendary Lap Award. The Russ Conway's friends at Thompson have uh, put together a trophy for the legendary lap. So uh, John McKennedy will also be awarded that trophy as Russ Conway, a very influential person in the super modified division. And John McKennedy, uh, a New Englander himself, just like Russ, a New Hampshire man himself, just like Russ, and he was a dominant factor today. So uh, John Spence is making his way down to Critical Signs Victory Lane, and as soon as he does, we will be able to make the presentations. So the gas pump will be going to the 21 car. So uh, John, I think he is down on Victory Lane, so when he's ready, we will send it down to the voice of the Isma Super Modifieds, John Spence. All right, thank you very much. Here's your winner. Bunch of well-wishers, including Cairo and Lee Vinyl. Congratulating John McKennedy. John, if you can come on over, because we got uh, we got to get uh, moving on this. Um, first of all, congratulations. The car was on a rail yesterday. You looked strong in the heat. Then things slowed up. What happened yesterday? I just wanted to try to conserve a little bit for today's race. The biggest thing was just finishing the top four for the redraw and. Um, that's kind of what we did yesterday for the heat. It's no secret this one you wanted. Yeah, it's a tough one. I, uh, I lost my best friend a few weeks ago. My, my dad, he was a huge part of my racing career. and um, My biggest fan and best friend. So it's great to get here and win at Thompson. Um, I don't know, it's tough. He was riding with me today, though. I just want to thank Pam and Lee Vinyl, the car owners, this is our last race as owners. The last few years have just been awesome. Um, we won a handful of races, a championship. Really couldn't ask for much more. So big thanks to Pam and Lee, all the crew guys, 
Um, Harrington Paven, big helper with this whole deal, keeps this thing going for us. Thank you, Bob. Uh, just thanks, everyone, and uh, thanks for all the fans coming out this weekend, and uh, hope you guys enjoy the race. Congratulations, John. Well done. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you, John and John. So 16.982, Joe, uh, Joe, that was the fast time for John McKennedy as he will get the Russ Conway Legendary Lap Award. And an emotional interview for John over the past uh, couple of weeks. Been a hard time for him, as you heard from him in his Victory Lane interview. But uh, this will certainly help do a lot of healing, and he will uh, be able to carry this trophy on and this memory for many, many years to come. Coming up next... I might have misspoke a moment ago. It's the NEMA Lights that will be on track uh, for their feature event, part of the Sunday edition program, then the Wheel and Modified Tour. And remember, because of the rain that we had on Friday night, pushed some of the feature events to the end of today's race, race program. So after the Wheel and Modified Tour race, we still have four more feature events to go. Some of our touring series throughout New England will be racing, including the Wheel and All-American Series Mini Stock Division. They still have a championship on the line as well coming into today well while we've got an opportunity again a great chance for you to make your way down to the midway visit the shane hammond foundation for example and uh, see what they have going on down there she racing has a booth on the midway as well anderson windows leaf filter among others down to the midway a great opportunity to do that while we get this victory lane celebration uh, wrapped up here on the front straightaway 